to start with the first thing to do will be to fold the piece into two like that and you don't need any measurement in folding it you just fold into two while taking our measurements we will end up getting the perfect folding so after folding you take one and a half inches or two inches like that and that is for the folding of the sleeve the folding you will fold inside the sleeve so if you want yours to be big you can take two inches and if you want yours normal you can take one and a half inches so you just take that point downwards use your ruler to join downwards like that then you take your sleeve measurement our sleeve measurement is six and a half inches and you take it from that two inches mark we initially took or your one and a half inches mark depending on how big you want your folding to be so after taking that sleeve measurement you also use a ruler to join the line you can see you are just taking random down we are not really taking the measurement to a particular measurement then from that sleeve mark you take your back measurement so our back is eight and a half inches so you take it from that so as you can see we are actually getting the perfect folding in the end so we can't really just start folding from the beginning to a, a particular measurement so after taking our back measurement we we'll mark one inch down on that sleeve line then you take your neck measurement which is three inches wide and one inch downwards now after doing that you join bow points with a curve and on the edge of that three inches you start cutting to the edge of the one inch downwards mark after doing that you join the edge of the three inches mark to the slant of the wrist then you follow that slant line downwards to the edge of the sleeve you can stop at that two inches mark because we will not be continuing the cut from that two inches mark we'll go up a bit then we'll cut to the sleeve point then we'll start cutting upwards why we didn't cut to the final when you fold you don't want one part to be smaller than the other part for our sleeve you can take as big as possible depending on how big you want yours to be because most times i take as big as possible and i end up reducing 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 so you can take as big as eight inches nine inches even ten inches so for i'll be taking 22 inches downwards you can take yours 22 depending on how your measurement is from your shoulder to your hip line then you take your hip measurement divided by four after which you can add as much as three and a half inches or even four inches depending on how wide you want yours to be remember anything you're adding will eventually become times four so just know what you're adding after adding that excess to that i'll take that measurement and i'll also take it upwards and our measurements downwards so that measurement now will become our all-round measurement so that hip measurement will be used for the hip so i'll take it upwards to the sleeve and i make a curve to join the sleeve like that then after that i'll be taking the line i took for the hip down so you can understand how i got that measurement then i'll also be taking the length and the length will be from the tip of that neck down to how long i want it to be i mostly like using 40 inches because for most people 40 inches is just a little bit above the knee or if or most times on top of the knee so after taking my 40 inches mark i'll also take a folding allowance mark you can make yours two inches and you can also make yours one and a half inches i always say depending on how you want yours to be there is no standard you can even make yours three inches if you you are not sure of the length and probably you think the client might want you to increase the length so after doing that you cut off so in cutting it is a bit technical especially when you get to that position to that part of the sleeve to the position of the sleeve so you just pay attention at this part so when i get to that sleeve point i'll stop so i'll just cut off the sleeve like that go down a bit longer than the normal sleeve 
then meet the cut there. Now that's not the final cut of the sleeve. I'm just trying to show you what I mean when I say you don't want one part to be smaller than the other part. So after that, you bend, you turn to the other side. Then you cut your sleeve now after bending your folding like that. And you also cut for the top. When you cut like this and you open it up, you will see that both are not actually straight lines. So you can see what we got. And if we fold this, we will actually get a perfect folding. And that's the reason why we didn't cut everything together in the beginning. You just saw on the edge of that folding and that will be that so we'll be going straight to the cutting of the back piece just to identify the wrong face i'll make use of my chalk in making lines like that so that lines will just make the wrong face a little bit more visible so i don't make mistake because at this point i don't think i have the time or the capacity to afford a mistake so i folded it and i'll also place the right piece on that folded part and it will help me in adjusting the folded part to the exact size of the front piece the whole thing i'm just trying to do here is make sure i fold to the exact size of the front piece then i'll cut off exactly the way the front piece is After cutting both pieces, we we'll make use of our pressing iron to create our center line. So we we'll pick one of those pieces and use for the front piece. You take nine inches from that point downwards like that, and you also take two inches from there like that. We'll work on those two points to create the space for the fixing of our V-neck. Now the depth nine inches depend on how deep you want yours to be. You can reduce yours if you like it's time to join both points now for us to cut out but before we join both points the first thing we'll do will be to mark it out and make it clearer then on that point you take one inch it is that one inch mark you use a ruler to join a straight line to the mark on the shoulder line so from that one inch point now we'll use our ruler to join a straight line to that two inch so that your inches mark on the shoulder line and exactly what we got will be what we'll be cutting out so what we'll do now is we'll use our scissors to start the cutting from that shoulder point we'll cut up until the one inch mark point so when we get to the one inch mark point we will now go the other way around like that and with that we've succeeded in creating the space we'll use in making our v-neck our v-neck will be for the front while the round neck will be for the back now for our booboo design we created a folding of 10 by 8 inches we've already folded half inch inwards on all sides so what we did there is 10 by 8 inches so for this other mark you can take 2 by 3 inches depending on what you like take 2 on that side and 3 on the other side or 2 and half by 3 all we give you a beautiful shape just like this so what you see now is the is the interface we added inside it to make it smooth and make the folding process easier the interface we added to that shape is not the same interface we added to what we'll be using for the v-neck the interface we added for what we'll be using for the v-neck is a little bit harder because we need it to be strong so what we actually have here is uh, two inches measurement that is long probably almost definitely longer than the space so that we can trim off to our desired size the folded piece is two inches high though longer than the v-neck we created but they are both two inches high so that's just what you need to know 
you can make yours a little bit wider than that if you want but just know that since you gave a one inch mark on the down line that two inches will cross each other the two inches will not cross if the height of that is not up to two inches if it is let's say one one inch probably the two inches will not cross but since it is bigger than one inch the two inches will cross so you sew like that from the top down to the point of that one inch mark for that side you would also sew like that to the point of the one inch mark for the other side as you can see we've sewn it half inch to that point and also half inch to the other point so the next thing to do would be to use our scissors to notch both edges you will notch both edges to the point of where you stop your sewing but you will not catch the thread just make sure you don't catch the thread almost up until the position of the thread then stop so after notching both edges it will be easier for you to bend that v neck you're about to create inwards so you bend it inwards like that and after bending it inwards you fold that piece inwards too and everything will look smooth on the top like that but to perfect everything you can sew it inside or you can just top stitch top stitch i would advise you do after using your pressing iron to press so what you just do is on the edge of the fabric not the piece you use for the v-neck now on the edge of the fabric you just make a stitch from that top all the way down like that then from down all the way to the top you sew the fabric not the blue piece we've top stitched all through like that and that is to hold the v-neck intact then you fold into two and trim off the excesses of the v-neck following that slant line so when you're trimming you can also trim inwards too on the fabric and that will reduce the size of the fabric when you're trimming the back piece you would also do the same thing now the neck of the front piece is now wider than the neck of the back piece so you want to make the neck of the front piece and the back piece exactly the same so what we'll do now that neck of the front piece will make it the same with the back piece by folding the front piece into two like that then we'll bring the back piece and also fold the back piece into two you put the back piece underneath the front piece and trim the neck of the back piece to half inch before the position of the front piece but before then you trim all the needed trimmings to be done to make the front and the back piece exactly the same make sure you position them together to be of exactly the same position then you take your trimmings from the shoulder like that all through then you mark half inch away from the neck of the front piece and make your curve to meet the original existing curve of the back piece and that will eventually give you the neck you need it you need because when you add your facing that half inch will remove and both will now become of exactly the same size we finished working on the neck now we use the neck of the back piece to cut out the facing that facing would be what will continue the v-neck on the back line so i've taken the height of the eventual outcome of the v-neck you know i took two inches when i cut after sewing it has to be around one and a half inches so whatever i'll be getting for the facing of the back piece to continue the v-neck should be one and half so what i'll do now is i folded two i folded two together like that or i folded two then i place the back piece on that folded part the, the folded back piece is also aligned with the part of the folded pieces i folded so i'll cut out the neck on that piece i folded that's the neck of this back piece i'll use in cutting out the curve on that piece and that will give us the neck of the piece will be folding just to be sure i use the pin in holding it down i don't easily use pin i don't know but i just want to be sure of this so i use the pin in holding it down then i also trim the shoulder line to correspond now that is the easy part so the easy part is done 
the hard part now would be to get the size of this facing to exactly the same size of the v-neck on the front piece now the v-neck on the front piece is one and a half inches so this has to be two and a half inches two and a half inches because the half inch will be used for the joining of the neck and also half inch will be folded on the down line of this piece you see two and a half inches all through the neck measurement to get a curve like that so i got corresponding points and those points are to each other just like that and when i finish marking out all those points i show that is parallel to the shape of that neck the curve will be almost of the same shape with that of the neck check my curve very well use my scissors to make sure there is no edge that there's no contour it will just be all pure curve all through anywhere i found there to be uh, edge i'll just trim it off to make sure what i have is a curve all through now to bend the downline to bend it of this curve of this facing you need uh, a straight piece you don't even need a curve piece you use a straight piece you turn that this curve to the front piece then you use that piece to sew by half inch all through on the edge like that you sew all on the edge and that will help later this is what you get after joining then to make the toning process easier, you top stitch the piece you used in sewing it. If you look closely, you will see that we've sewn the facing to the neckline. What will make the toning process easier is for us to notch. So you use your scissors to notch all through but just make sure you don't catch the thread the notching is even more important for the curve parts so after notching you turn the facing outwards then make use of your pressing iron to straighten things and bend to the sewing line which is already one and a half inches before we join the piece together we have to finish off the design of the front piece so the shape we cut out to be on the down line of the v-neck we'll place it like that you can place it in different ways but this is the way we've decided to place ours today so you just sew on the edge on the edge of the whole shape like that we finished sewing that you can see now for the neck you can also see the back piece the back piece was top stitch on the edge like that so both facing of the back piece and the v-neck of the front piece are both one and a half inches so we top stitch on the edge like that the joining process of the back and the front is just your normal joining there is no tactics you can use on this one to get the back piece to be one and a half inch and not just do your normal joining so you just join the front and the back inwards no technicality involved you just join both of them inwards like that and that will be that after joining the front and the back piece on the shoulder line you whip to make sure nothing loses then you can also top stitch from the edge like that to the sleeve and do the same for the other part the next on the menu is the sleeve and this curve edge you see here will come into play at this point so we'll fold the sleeve on the line we created for the sleeve folding which was the first thing we did when we started cutting so you fold for the left hand and so also fold for the right hand and so so after that you sew by half inch from the sleeve to the down line then you do the same for the other sleeve you fold to the folding line then you sew and also join together from the sleeve to the down line by a half inch stitch now after sewing to the down line you would also fold after sewing both sides to the down line you also fold by two inches which we took 